Connor Bedard is a top prospect for the NHL 2023 entry draft. He is the seventh player to receive exceptional status and the first from Western Canada, meaning that he could play an entire season in the WHL at the age of 15. Not a big deal. In the 21-22 season, he was able to tally up 100 points and 51 goals throughout 62 games in the WHL. And as of when I'm recording this, he has played nine games with the Pats this season and has 16 points. He's also made a couple appearances for Team Canada. Should probably mention that. With all that being said, let's jump into a simulation on NHL 23 and see what EA Sports thinks will happen in Connor Bedard's career. He is expected to go first overall, no surprises there. And we see that the New Jersey Devils will actually win the draft lottery, moving from three to one. They draft Connor, of course, who is a 79 overall sniper with medium franchise potential. And I will be showing you all of the retiring players as well, just to see if there's anything interesting going on there. He does not make the roster in year number one, but he does jump up to an 85 overall, signs that entry level contract and put up 99 points with the Pats that season. Louis Erickson, what a legend. Connor would play on the second line with Holtz and Palat, and I will be showing you guys the rest of the roster as well so we can see how the whole team that he is on progresses. New Jersey would finish with 99 points. They have a successful first season with Connor in the lineup. Second in the Metro, he puts up 59 points as well as six playoff points. In nine games, he would take home the Calder for his first season in the NHL. They get swept by the Rangers in the second round. And Ryan Suter is up there with 720 points. In just his second NHL season, he's up to a 90 overall. He will be playing with Nico and Brat on the first line. New Jersey would have a not-so-successful season, 92 points finishing sixth in the Metro, and Bedard would only play 22 games, so clearly he had a pretty big injury this season, which is unfortunate, but it doesn't stop him. He's still 90 overall, going to be playing with Heischer and Brat yet again. They lose Blackwood, but they still got Lucas as the goalie there. They finished third in the league this year with 110 points, a nice amount of points out of Bedard. Not a great playoff showing, but hey, at least they're back in the mix. This time it would be Ottawa that would get the better of them in just five games. Ovechkin and Crosby decide to retire at the same time. Bedard would start on the second line. He's got Stamkos as a winger, so can't be too upset about that. Signs a nice new bridge deal here. Two years at 7.6. They finished second in the league. Same amount of points as Colorado, but they got defeated in row. And we see a point a game plus season from Connor getting 85 points. Almost point a game in the playoffs as well, but they can't seem to shake that first round curse. Claude Giroux retiring as a Montreal Canadian, just shy of 1,300 points. The AI once again decides to put Connor on the second line, and I gotta say, a less impressive second line this year, but they still managed to have a successful season. 101 points is good enough for second in the Metro, 85 points out of Connor again, and another first round exit. They just can't get past the first round right now. Hopefully, they'll be able to shake that soon. Stamkos, a recent line mate of Connor is retiring as well as Malkin. Back to the first line, he'll be playing with Hughes and Brat, Shabbat and Soderstrom. They got Lucas in net backed up by Kevin. He signs a nice new deal. Six years at 11 million AAV. They finish second in the Metro with 106 points. Hughes gets the most, but Bedard does get 89. He also got nine points in just six playoff games, but despite his best effort, they still can't get past the first round. This time, their fate would be sealed by the Islanders. Now heading into year number nine, Hughes, Bedard, and Brat still together. Shabbat and Soderstrom as the first defensive pair. We got Blumquist, who I'm pretty sure was there in our last career sim. Could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Played 78 games this year. He was exactly point a game. Six playoff games and three points. The Islanders put them out in six. And Patrick Kane is the top retiring player, just shy of 1,900. That's got a sting. For whatever reason, they decide that Connor's best on the second line. So they put him back there. Doesn't pay off, though. They get 91 points, finish fifth in the Metro, miss the playoffs. And Connor would actually get the most points this season, puts up 68. Vancouver goes on to win the Stanley Cup, and Leon retires as an Oiler. Back to the first line he goes in year 11. New Jersey would also pick up a 38-year-old Andre Vasilevsky. He still got the abilities, though. They finished third in the Metro this season with 98 points. Connor plays 76 games and has 68 points. Another first-round exit, something they're becoming all too familiar with. Carolina Hurricanes would get the better of them in five. And Connor McDusty. That's a pretty good point per game average. I have to mention that Vancouver just won back to back to back Stanley Cups. That is crazy. The Devils missed the playoffs this year. Connor would be point a game, getting exactly 82 points. Johnny Goudreau 
decides to hang them up and he retires with the Buffalo Sabres. This year, Connor will be in the center position on the first line. They got two pretty solid goalies there. They finished second in the league, tied again for points, but they lost in row. 98 points from Bedard would lead the team, and he also puts up 26 points in 22 playoff games, wins himself a Lady Bing and a Stanley Cup. What a season from Connor. That was bound to happen. Look at the abilities on that first line. It's crazy. Two good goalies again, and he signs a nice new deal. Eight years at 12 million. They finish second in the league this season with 107 points. We see 89 in 76 games from Connor. Unfortunately, the playoff run was cut a little bit short this year. They made it past the first round, but Carolina would beat them in seven. Kirill the Thrill decides to retire with 1,299 points. He was so close, just like Patrick Kane, to that nice round number, but couldn't quite get there. New Jersey finishes with 44 wins and they finish first in the Metro. Connor puts up 86 points and another first round exit. They're back to their old habits. The Ottawa Senators would put them out. And in year 15, we see Marner and Matthews retiring together. On the first line, 91 overall. He is still the centerman. The team still looks solid as a unit. They finish second in the league. 108 points, once again losing in row. They are so close to the President's Trophy but they just can't lock it down. It's like the first round curse, except this time it's the season. But I've actually heard that the President's Trophy can be a curse in and of itself. Jack Hughes, longtime teammate of Connor, decides that he has had enough. Unfortunately, Bedard is stuck with a 78 overall and an 81 overall for his wingers this year. The team finishes fifth in the Metro. He still puts up a decent amount of points considering he was a dash 20, but we just won't talk about that. Marty's at the top of U17's retirement list. New Jersey does hook him up with a bit of a better line mate this year, I gotta say. Slight improvement. They finished fifth in the Metro again, however. 88 points, missing out on the playoffs. 78 points would come from Connor, playing the full 82 games. Smashville win the Stanley Cup, and Jimmy Superstar is at the top of the year 18 retirement list. Despite being 84 overall, Connor does still get on the first line. The team finishes sixth in the Metro, however, one position worse than the last two years, and we only get 59 points out of Connor. This is the Devils' third straight season, missing out on the playoffs. And in year 20, Bedard is on the fourth line. That is a rough go. He's down to 81 overall. They would make the playoffs this year, though. 88 points is good enough for fourth in the Metro, and he still puts up 57. Considering he's 81 overall, not bad whatsoever. They would get deleted in the first round, and they got swept as well, so it was a pretty convincing elimination. He moves all the way up to the third line this year. He's still 81 overall, so at least he didn't get any worse, but the team did. They missed the playoffs again. They finished sixth. Bedard puts up 55 points, playing 78 games. The Rangers go on to win the Stanley Cup, and the man that we recently simulated, Uri, does a little bit better in this one. Bedard somehow at 80 overall gets put on the first line for the San Jose Sharks, a very ability-filled team by the looks of it. They finish second in the Pacific with 101 points. Connor has a step-up season a little bit, getting 65 points. Unfortunately, his playoff fate does not change. He gets swept in the first round by the Vancouver Canucks. Shane Wright, just over 1,700 points. Great career out of him. Bedard is now on the Seattle Kraken. Second line, 79 overall. The team doesn't look super solid. He signs a two-year, $5.7 million deal. But somehow they finish second in the Pacific Division. And we see 54 points in just 75 games from Connor, who also puts up 28 points in 23 playoff games, winning himself a Conn Smythe, a second Stanley Cup. I don't know how that happened. I actually have no idea how that happened, but I'm here for it. I wonder if that makes him the oldest player to win a Conn Smythe. I kind of doubt it, but you never know. Maybe it is possible. After a season in Coachella Valley, Connor decides he is done. He had a total of 1,465 points, 602 goals, so he passed that 600 mark. That's got to feel good. Unfortunately, he never got a 100 point plus season, but still did very well overall and two very successful playoff runs. He did earn some hardware throughout his career, taking home the Rookie of the Year as well as two Stanley Cups. He also earned 197.5 million over 22 years of contracts and played for three teams. Assuming I marked down all of the retirings correctly, Connor 
would retire at 34th all-time in terms of points. He would be between Leon Dreisaitl and David Pasternak. Well, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, a like would be great, but obviously not required. But anyways, guys, I do want to thank you so much for tuning in. And on that note, I will see you soon.